Hi, I'm JJ Lamb, President of the Vale Preservation Society, and welcome to another episode of Vanished Vale, where I take you on tours to some of Vale's very special places. Last time, we explored the origins of the old Vale Post Office and the tragically short life of Otto Schley. Now, Otto may have built the post office, but this building is a home to so many other people's stories. So step back inside with me, and I'm going to introduce you to probably Vale's most well-known woman, Post Mistress Mary Jane Warner. Come on in. You know, the first thing that you notice uh, when you step inside today are these braces. These were actually installed in 2007 as um, part of our efforts to stabilize the building. Now, when uh, Vail Preservation Society and Lloyd Construction Incorporated are done with the rehabilitation work that needs to be done to bring this building back to life, these supports will no longer be here. But that is a story for another time, and we'll talk about that later. For most of the post office's history, what you would see when you stepped through the door didn't really change much. The long bar that ran down the center of the room, the egg crates against the south wall where you'd pick up your mail, and even the woman standing behind that long bar. For 39 years, Mary Jane Warner was Vale's postmistress. She worked in this room, sorting mail, selling groceries, other odds and ends from her store right here that people would need. They were quite out in the country. This was the only store in the area. And she lived in this building with her three younger siblings in the three east rooms right to my right. Mary Jane Warner knew everybody because if you lived within 10 miles of this spot, this was where you got your mail. And those very last minute sundries that didn't warrant a day's trip into Tucson. That was a long ways. Mary Jane was very gregarious and social. She loved her family, she loved her community, and she served for years on the Vail School Board. In fact, when she retired, she received a very special award and it was presented by Esta Trotter. She loved playing cards and she enjoyed a shot of whiskey with her friends. She also loved to go to dinner and dancing with her many gentlemen admirers. And she, she really did love to socialize. She played her mother's piano that was just in the very next room in the living quarters. Mary Jane Warner made a really good life for herself here in Vail, inside Vail's home country store and post office. That's what this building was called in the 1930s. But for all her outward joy and happiness and socializing, there was a thread of sadness that ran through Mary Jane's life as well. Mary Jane was a very special, but a complex person as well. But for a woman who came to be synonymous with Vail, the story of how she came here and the reasons that she stayed were anything but ordinary and really begin right here in this spot. And actually at the corner of Colossal Cave Road and Old Vail Road. It was a Sunday morning in 1927, right here, right at the corner of Vail Road and Highway 80, the Broadway of America, where Mary Jane's mother, Debbie Woolsey, her second husband, and their children, who were traveling west, ran out of gas. Now, there used to be a glass, one of those glass top gasoline pumps. It was located um, right off the northeast corner of the post office at the corner of what's now Colossal Cave Road and Old Vale Road. It was there to serve those travelers along Highway 80, the Broadway of America. But the Vale Home Country Store and Post Office was not open on Sunday. Now the family was also nearly out of money. They were pretty destitute. But just at that moment, Caroline Beach, a prominent resident of Vale, happened to see them as she came out of Sunday morning mass. Sunday morning mass in those days was held at the Vail School. The Shrine of Santa Rita wasn't built until 1935. Caroline just happened to be looking for a new postmaster who would have mail ready on a more regular basis than the postmaster they had at that 
point in time. Caroline knew what she wanted and she liked to have her mail every day. So after she spoke with Debbie for a little while, she discovered that Debbie was a very talented piano player and had a lovely singing voice. Well, Caroline was actually looking for someone to play the piano for mass on Sundays. So this was perfect. Caroline told Debbie about the postmaster position and that it also came with living quarters. And those living quarters are just at the east end of what was then uh, the home country store. And we call it the Old Vale Post Office. So it didn't take long for the Woolsey family because one, um, they were out of gas, they were out of money, they didn't have anywhere really to go specifically. So they decided to take Caroline up on her offer and the Woolsey family decided to stay and they made their home right here inside the Old Vale Post Office or the home country store. This room is part of the living quarters. This was what we would call a combination sitting room, uh, kitchen. Um, this is where Debbie and her husband made their home. Unfortunately, they weren't able to call it home for very long. Debbie's husband, James, died in 1931, and in 1933, Debbie was diagnosed with cancer. Her children, Bud, Betty, and Ed, were still very young and not old enough to be on their own. Debbie wrote to her firstborn daughter. Mary Jane had been born when Debbie was very, very young, and Mary Jane had been left to be raised by Debbie's strict maiden aunts. Mary Jane was now a young woman in her 20s. She had worked very hard, and she had established herself in a very a great position as an executive secretary in a very prominent car dealership in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Mary Jane was going places. Actually, I, I think it says a lot about Mary Jane that she took leave to come out to help her mother, Debbie, and her younger siblings. Mary Jane and her husband, Everett Warner, moved temporarily to Vail. I don't think that Mary Jane ever expected to spend the rest of her life in Vail. Now, Mary Jane really took over the day-to-day -day operations of the home country store and post office, while Everett was hired as an LEM, or local experienced man, at the Civilian Conservation Corps camp that was established in 1934 at a Colossal Cave. When Debbie passed away in 1934, Mary Jane decided that she wanted to make sure that her brothers and sister were raised together and had a place to live. Caroline Beach became part of the story again. Caroline respected the way Mary Jane cared for her mother at the end of her life, and she respected her desire to keep her siblings together. And Mary Jane was also doing an excellent job with the home country store and post office. Caroline wanted Mary Jane to be able to stay, but how to get Mary Jane an appointment as postmaster? That was not quite as easy as one might think. This was 1934, the middle of the Great Depression, and there was a gentleman in Tucson named George Allen who was extremely active in the local Democratic Party. He and his son had campaigned hard and volunteered many, many hours to help Isabella Greenway get elected to Congress. Now, George had been out of work for three years. He saw this government appointment, postmaster here in Vail, as something that he had worked hard for. This is something that would put his family on a much better stable path moving forward. Now, Mr. Allen, of course, had lots of connections uh, with the local Democratic Party. And he felt like he had, um, you know, really helped Isabel Greenway. But Caroline Beach had her own network of connections. And she really wanted Mary Jane Warner to be the postmaster here in Vail. So really, Mr. Allen didn't have much of a chance. It was just a very few days after Debbie's death when Caroline telegraphed Isabella Greenway. May I beg your favorable action on the appointment of Mary Jane Warner, Democrat, as postmistress of Vail, Arizona. Mrs. Warner has been assistant postmistress during her widowed mother's long and fatal illness. Mrs. Woolsey's death has left destitute three young children. 
Mrs. Warner wishes to keep the home for these children, holding them all together for four years. We have donated the building, which holds the home country store and post office, the only store building in Vail. Mrs. Warner has given satisfaction in her work, and the various members of the Vail community with whom we have discussed this are in accord with our plea, praying for a favorable action. Caroline Beach. There were courtesy communications between Congresswoman Greenway, the local Democratic chair, and Mr. Allen. Mr. Allen tried to use a regulation saying that a person had to be a resident. And to his mind, Mary Jane was from Oklahoma. Now Caroline countered that the fact that uh, Mary Jane had been living here in Vail and doing the work required for six months she said it just didn't matter where she'd lived before that. In the end, Caroline Beach had her way, as she usually did. In September of 1934, Mary Jane received official confirmation of her appointment as Vail Postmaster. Now, many Vail old timers who grew up here uh, during the 1940s and 50s have wonderful memories uh, of helping Mary Jane get the mail bags. Um, out to the passing train or back in from the passing train and sometimes they would even do that on their lunch hour from Vail School which is just across the railroad tracks to the north. So sometimes uh, the kids would even get to put the mailbag way up high on that F crane hook um, or when the, the mail workers on board the trail would throw them off because usually they just pass through very slowly. Uh, they would drag those large bags in for Mary Jane to to sort. Now she would always reward them, usually with candy, Butterfinger or some other candy for their work. Mary Jane really didn't like a lot of idleness or fiddling around. So we're going to let uh, Maxie or Bill Allen uh, share a story about a time um, that he remembers here, right here in the old post office after he had brought in the mail bag for Mary Jane. I, I remember one, one time uh, was waiting for Mary Jane to sort the mail. She was back around the counter where the uh, mail uh, slots were, and I was sitting up on the counter. You know, and just not thinking, I started drumming my heels against the, uh, the counter. Well, in just a second, Mary Jane asked me to stop that. So I did, and I didn't think anything about it. Next thing I knew, you know, I'm just tapping my heels again. This time, Mary Jane said in a little sharper tone, stop that. Well, and I did. Next thing I knew, bam, bam, bam. I was kicking the counter again, and Mary Jane <laughs> dropped her mail, yelled at me, and she started heading around the counter to where I was. I got up and I beat her out the front door. <laughs> I never kicked the counter anymore. <laughs> the long wooden counter with a handmade candy case that Mary Jane kept stocked with candy. Many remember how the store smelled like, kind of like Tootsie Rolls and Butterfingers. To the 1930s canvas camel cigarette advertisement and the 1907 cash register used until the very last day the store was open in 1973. The room pretty much remained the same, and that familiarity of place continues to be missed today by older Vail residents whose family stories all connect right here in the old Vail post office. Now, when Mary Jane retired in 1973, she was quoted as saying, you know, Vail, it may be a small place to some, but to those of us who live here, it's the center of the world. Thank you for joining me on this special tour of the Old Vale Post Office. I can't wait to see you again for the next episode of Vanished Vale, where we explore more of Vale's special places together. See you next time. <laughs>